The UK's Rental Crisis There is no doubt that rent in the UK is far from being cheap. It is now at the highest rate on record and it's still on its way up by the day. That begs the question, why is rent so high in the UK? The answer is not far-fetched. It's simply because of the UK's rental crisis. You will understand this chaos better and discern how it is currently enveloping the country's housing sector if you have been on the hunt for a rental property in the country in the last year or so. In today's video, we will discuss how gripping the crisis is, the effects on the tenants and what is being done to deal with it. Not only in London. We have produced a video that examines why the rent is so high in London. You're encouraged to try and watch it so that you can have the right context for this discussion about the UK as we may not have the luxury of repeating what has been highlighted in that video. However, the situation we have found and described in that video is typical of the rental crisis in the country. The only thing we can probably add is that the city was not prepared for the chaotic rental challenge as well as other post-Brexit and post-pandemic crises in the country. Manchester. Home can be sold while you are there. In Manchester, it's nothing unusual to have flats being sold even while the occupants are still within their tenancy period. A couple signed an extension of their tenancy until June 22 and were happy to be staying put since they would have to enjoy some stability having moved it every year. They were shocked, however, to find that a month thereafter, the flat was being sold and they weren't sure if they could continue their tenancy with the new landlord. When they moved to the city from Newcastle the previous year, the rent was around £900 to £1,100. By the time of renewal of their tenancy, it was offered for 1400 to 1500 This is one of the dozens of cases hitting the headlines about the rental challenge in the city. A similar situation is that of Eleanor, who was evicted under a no-fault order. She and her two kids became homeless because she couldn't find somewhere else to rent. The 33-year-old, who had never missed her rent of £700 a month, was now faced with a minimum listing of £925 for similar properties. The number of listings in Manchester has fallen by 40% over the past three years, while inquiries have increased 3.7 times, with prices up by 32%. Bradford has its fair share. The UK rental crisis is tough also in Bradford and Sunderland. In these cities, the drop in listings has been greater and more pronounced. Consider first the case of the northern city of Bradford. In September 2019, there were 688 new listings and the average price was £557. But three years later, in September 2022, new listings were not up to half of what they were and the average price has gone up by 26%. Meanwhile, there has been a six-fold increase in response to ads. And Sunderland isn't spared. In Sunderland, the home of the Black Cats, the rent crisis is also pathetic. It's even worse in many respects than the case of Bradford. And it didn't start today. Ask the Mackhams and they will tell you the palpable level of anxiety in the city about retaining their homes and getting a new one. In this city, almost 10 times as many people are now responding to an ad as in September 2019. Again, rising demands, inflation, legislation and landlord antics are among the factors exacerbating the upwards pressure on rents. We'll touch on this later even in Scotland. Even outside England is no better. There's no sure sucker on the Scottish capital of Edinburgh. A renter who had earlier thought the situation would be better in the city was traumatised upon realising that finding a flat in the, that city isn't something at the fingertip that can be achieved half-heartedly. Using the Right Move app, he found out that the six-month search had not produced a new home for him. Now jaded and embittered, he made house hunting a routine that had required dedication, organisation, lots of money and a significant amount of luck. The responses always were that the slot had all been filled. When he even filtered to include the recently listed, probably in the last 24 hours, he was put on the queue in case someone drops out. If you're lucky to be considered, you'd be required to travel down, sometimes hundreds of kilometres, not just to view the house but to meet the landlord. Landlords in Edinburgh tend to prefer prospective tenants who have made efforts to come, and they don't appreciate it when you send a friend or an agent. But what happens after you have spent a minimum of £120 on a return train ticket and £80 on accommodation, only to find out that the property is overpriced or isn't just for your kind of circumstances? That, sadly, is what many renters have to go through. Even if they succeeded in getting the home, there's no guarantee that they won't go through the same process in the next 12 months. 
You can't be sure that you will not be evicted from the house at any time, even so soon, even if you're regular with the rent payment. How did it get this bad? At the height of the pandemic, young people seemed to be fleeing cities in droves. They were excited by the opportunity to live in more affordable areas, since it has become clearer that working from home was the way to go. Well, that euphoria didn't last long. No sooner had normality returned, prospective renters started tracing their routes back into cities. Subsequently, London's rental market has been unabated growth in inquiries and searches. Also, many tenants are now willing to extend their rental agreements. Commenting on this, the managing director of a property company says, This has created an extremely competitive market for tenants, where many offer landlords over asking price in order to secure a property. That alone wouldn't be such a big problem. The short-sighted policies of the UK government aggravate the rental crises. In the last three years, immigrants are flocking to the UK in hundreds of thousands, as it seems the country has now left its doors ajar. Also, the government seems to have neglected the interests of tenants in favour of landlords. This essentially gives them free reign to raise rents arbitrarily through providing the bare minimum in return. Its failure to put measures in place to curb house price inflation is pushing more and more people into renting from dogged private landlords. The social housing shortage hasn't helped the situation. Non-governmental remedial efforts the London Renters Union cannot just fold its arms and continue to watch its members being fleeced by what it has described as rent gouging. The union in London and Manchester planned protests which would be sustained in other major cities to pressurise the government into freezing rents as a kind of emergency measure. They demanded that Michael Gove, the British Secretary of State, ban no-fault evictions that landlords were using to seek rent raises. Ministers also face demands to increase their payment in housing benefits to cover rising costs. Campaigners, charities, NGOs and housing experts have also added their voices to the call on the government to take drastic action to curb this rental crisis in the UK. They have proposed measures such as rent inflation caps, an all-out ban on rent increases and a repeal of Section 21 or no-fault evictions which empowers landlords to kick tenants out at will or with little notice while replacing them with tenants that can pay inflated rents. Governmental efforts to arrest the situation The calls to ban no-fault eviction orders had intensified as the government had been promising to act on it since April 2019 and yet there's no date for the change or total ban to finally become an established law. When Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's previous First Minister, announced a rent freeze, she described the pressure rent is placing on household budgets as a humanitarian emergency. But the UK government has resisted rent control because, according to its officials, that would lead to disinvestment in the sector. London Mayor Siddiq Khan has also called for the doubling of the notice periods for private rental evictions so that tenants can have a notice of up to four months. This will give them more time to manoeuvre. The crisis didn't start overnight and won't disappear overnight. That's why all the effort to reduce the pangs won't show immediately. Please let us have your comments about this crisis. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and turn on the notification bell.